So, all the It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia episodes ranked from worst to best. This took me literally a month to make because I had to rewatch every single episode several times just to be sure. Such hard work. So, before we begin, I'm sorry, but I have three little disclaimers that I gotta say. First, this is a video that was made for the aficionados of the show rather than for the newbies, so it's bound to have some spoilers. You have been warned. Number two. This is a list that is subjective and highly based on opinion, so it's bound to make a bunch of people riled up. And on the other hand, the YouTube algorithm takes into account the nature of the comments where it decides to let or not a video flourish on its little network. So, if you are angry at my list and you won't call me a faggot and tell me to kill myself, Please do so on Twitter or Facebook or Instagram or Tumblr or even send me an email rather than doing it in the YouTube comments, please. And third, the Christmas episode, even if it's technically two episodes, is really one long episode, so I'm counting it as one. That's why my list has 133 entries instead of the 134 figure that you would find on IMDb or Wikipedia. This said, we are ready to start and who is at the bottom of the list at rank 133? That is the Maureen Ponderosa Wedding Massacre. So they have to be commended for the idea. A lot of American TV shows do a Halloween episode or a Christmas episode. This is a Friday the 13th episode, which is pretty original. Unfortunately, it's shit. It's meant to be half horror, half comedy, but the horror parts are not really scary and the comedy parts are not really funny. It's, in my opinion, a total fail. Next is Frank's brother, a less controversial choice, I guess. It's shoehorn. Frank's brother is never mentioned before or after, such is Shady Nasty. It's not really funny and it's not really endearing. And the beginning is dumb and the ending is shit. The only aspect that I actually like is when 60 something Danny DeVito plays a teenage version of himself with just a wig and some makeup on. This gets me every time. All of the rest doesn't though. Next is The Gang Gets Extreme Home Makeover Edition, so it's a stupid plot and it's too real and too weird at the same time and it's funny the idea that they would be obsessed with Ty Pennington, some sort of weird twink on cocaine, but it doesn't really work the jokes don't really land and the ending is completely not satisfying and stupid. It doesn't work in my opinion. Next is Thunder Gun Express. So the whole episode's plot is that they're stuck in traffic and no, it doesn't really work. They're trying to see their stupid movie. The only good aspect of this episode is the expression hangs dong, which is amusing, but apart from that, the jokes are weak and the whole episode is not downright bad, but yeah, really weak in my opinion. Next is MacPoyle vs. Ponderosa, the trial of the century. So, I gotta say that I hate the MacPoyles. I loathe them. They should not have been made recurring characters, it was a mistake. And this episode is full of them, so it's full of shit. The Jew lawyer is always good to have on screen, but maybe that's one time too many he was used. The jokes around him are starting to feel recycled at this point. Mac has some good lines and parts, and apart from that, uh, no. Next is The Gang Sells Out. Once again, a plot that doesn't really work in my opinion. I like the beginning of the episode, I like the cold open, it's really funny, but the development doesn't work. I don't even understand why they have to all get hired at this other place where the waitress works. Uh, the whole parts with the gay businessmen are cringy and awkward rather than funny. An episode that doesn't really work, even if it has some good moments, especially in the beginning. And the end is pretty nice too. Next is 
underage drinking a national concern. So this may be a culture shock, because here in Europe, nobody gives a shit about underage drinking. I remember my neighbors giving some light beers to fifth graders so they would feel cool. A bunch of my friends were alcoholic in middle school, and usually 21 years old is the age where we stop over drinking and all the hookups and all the drugs to settle down and settle into adulthood so this is really uh yeah culture shock for me i don't get it i don't get what's wrong with underage drinking i've been going into bars and drinking booze all the time since i was 16 and nobody ever gave a shit and nobody ever asked for my fucking id card so yeah it's just weird and they tried something and I, I don't understand. It's too too exotic and foreign for me, I guess. Next is the gang squashes their beefs. There are some funny lines, there are some funny moments. The whole concept is not bad, but it's weak and the, the dialogue is poor, the plot is poor, too many reused stuff. Doesn't really work in my opinion. The next is the gang makes Lethal Weapon 6, so same problem, there was an episode where there was a Lethal Weapon 5 and it's amazing, it's really really funny and they try to make Lethal Weapon remake into a whole episode and it doesn't work. Uh, it's The jokes are recycled from the well, Lethal Weapon 5 and it's nothing new, it's not as funny, not quite as funny as 5. And yeah, I haven't seen any of the Let Lethal Weapon movies, so maybe I'm missing something because of that, because I don't have the references. But next is Dennis and Dee get a new dad, so I hate Bruce Mattis. I, I don't think he's a good character for this show. Um, each time he's there, I, I cringe more than anything. He's supposed to be the archetype of a good person, but uh, in the middle of the other characters, he just comes off as pretentious and phony and he's not funny and every time he's on the screen it's not funny and so this episode is full of Bruce of course and the idea is good but the character ruins it for me next is the gang solves the North Korea situation yeah uh, Charlie's perfect mate being a child is, is a funny thought um, but apart from that, it's quite poor. The whole episode is a bunch of good ideas that don't really land. There's, uh, so, there's some funny stuff, like when Charlie thinks the door is marked pirate instead of private, stuff like this, and also it's the first uh, appearance of the duster, this kind of cheap matrix code for losers, and I hate it. And. Yeah, each time they wear this shit, it makes me angry <laughs> irrationally. Uh, not a super great episode, and not a bad one either. Next is uh, The Gang Cracks the Liberty Bell. Usually it's at the bottom of people's lists, but I think it has still a couple of funny moments, uh, especially with D being gay, which and uh, the, <laughs> the disguises worn by Dennis and Mac. The whole parts with Charlie and Frank are trash, but there's some, Cricket is good in there. There's some funny lines, there's some, and the, the cold open, the introduction, like uh, uh, I'm tired of this dude, or uh, whatever they say about this, the portrait of the old uh, British guy is really, is really funny. Next is the Aluminum Monster versus Fatima Goo. So it's uh, one of these episodes where they go full grotesque and weird, and it doesn't work at all in my opinion. It's too over the top for uh, my suspension of disbelief to be maintained. So uh, the whole sweatshop thing is just crazy. Dennis to trying to become a top model is even more crazy. The steam whistle I like. But apart from that, uh, no, the the, en the ending is weak, the beginning is weak, everything about this episode is pretty weak. Some good lines, some decent moments, but not a really good episode in my opinion. Um, next is The Gang Gets Whacked Part 2. Not a lot of fun here, The Gang Gets Whacked is a pretty weak episode and most of the jokes are in Part 1. 
this is just jokes of part one being recycled and stretched over way too long. Next is the storm of the century. Uh, Dennis' obsession with a big tit is a bit weird. I don't think it's really in character for him, uh, if that makes sense. And the, the whole thing is, there's some funny moments like uh, when uh, Frank and Dee have this mini debate about looting or stuff like that, but generally it's not... I, I kind of like it because it reminds me of that great My Name is Earl episode about Y2K and that machine that delivers little tickets. But yeah, it's not a great episode. Next is Mac and Charlie Die Part 2. So I don't understand what they made this. Mac and Charlie Die Part 1 is amazing, but it has all the jokes, and this is just a weird extension. It's like they made a, they made it a DLC uh, with all the bad parts for the... I don't get it. The whole scene with D in the bus is grotesque and, and not funny, and it's too... They didn't have to do this. Mac and Charlie Die Part 1 is perfect as it is. It's really funny. They could have made uh, some kind of long explanation at the end of Mac and Charlie Die Part 1 explaining what happens in this episode and it would have been much better. Next, Dennis Reynolds and Erotic Life. Oh, that's, that's that weird episode where Dennis gets locked with uh, some obscure pop singer from the 90s and uh, that dude, that, that Shazam dude who is in all the... Mandela Effect videos. I, I'm not sure who he is, but he's in the, all the Mandela Effect videos. And uh, that's just a weird episode. Um, I don't buy the part where they all find uh, each other at the fountain. It's too forced to me. Uh, I like the idea and I like the beginning of the episode, but despite some good moments, it is pretty weak. Next, The Gang Gets Whacked Part 1. Same as the Gang Gets Walk Part 2, it's a uh, bunch of weak jokes, uh, prostitution, jockeys, selling drugs to rich people. That could have been like a quarter of an episode. It doesn't need to be stretched for a whole one. Next, Charlie goes America all over everybody's ass. So it could have been interesting, it's a reflection on freedom in a political sense and what is freedom where does it start where does it stop uh, all this thing against uh, smoking is just doesn't work doesn't really land and mac and dennis trying to turn patty's pub into basically the city of rapture from bioshock doesn't really work because it's so fucking tame the episode is could have been like really this is a premise that could have let them turn the episode up to 11, but they didn't, and it's all really tame, it's just a bunch of girls showing their tits, and that's it, and have Chinese people playing poker. But, uh, the ending is really not satisfying, um, they didn't really try in my opinion. There's some funny moments, but it's really weak. Next is Bums. Making a mess all over the city. So, this episode, in my opinion, is plagued by Charlie being Serpico, which is dumb and doesn't work and it's not funny. Charlie is Serpico trash. The whole Dennis and Frank cop car free hot dog scheme is weak and not super funny. I really like the parts with Mac and Dee uh, trying to become vigilantes. The Mac and D are great in this episode, they're from a great team, their, their subplot is pretty great and it really works and it should have been most of the episode. Next is A Cricket's Tale, so uh, it's not really funny and I don't think it really tries to be funny and it's not really endearing either, I think it tries to be cute and endearing and it doesn't, it kind of fails. Uh, it's one of the episodes that lack a sense of direction. They should have made this kind of episode, but with, I don't know, Artemis, for example, it probably should have been better. Um, the cricket being a Yamakasi, I don't buy it. And the only good thing about this episode is the actress that they choose to play, Belle. This, act this actress is perfect for the role, and she really nails it. Apart from that, the tie-ins with other episodes of the season are a pretty nice touch. 
but uh, it's not enough. Next is the gang dances their asses off. Once again, the premise is funny, Charlie's illiteracy putting everyone in the shit is a funny thought, but the whole dancing endurance competition is... Uh, no, there's not enough jokes, there's not enough good moments, it's too repetitive. And I like the beginning and I like the ending, but the whole in-between is just dragging too long and it's not funny enough. Next is being frank. I like the idea, but it should not have been the whole episode in the eyes of Frank. I mean, from the eyes of Frank. The whole episode should not have been POV. Uh, maybe like the second half, maybe, you know, there, there should have been like an explanation at the beginning or some kind of, you know, escalation or... You know, and seeing the whole episode through the eyes of Frank uh, makes it weak. It's not bad, it's not really good. Next is the gang finds a dumpster baby. So, once again, um, the parts with Mac and Dee and the baby are really great and funny. And then when, when Charlie finds the baby and goes to the waitress, and that's that's funny too. Uh, the whole thing with um, Frank and Charlie becoming hoarders of trash is a bit too much. Uh, I, I, I like it at first, but it goes on for too long and it's a bit of a repetitive joke. And the whole thing with Dennis and the hippies is just dumb as shit. It's just dumb. It's not really satisfying. It's not really funny. So uh, it's, uh, yeah, it's a collage of weird shit that turns out good in the end. The ending is kind of funny. But yeah, it's, once again, I like the beginning. I like the ending, but everything that's in between is not really on par. Next is Mac fights gay marriage. Uh, it's an important episode because it's a setup for all of season six which has kind of this arc uh, and lots of jokes are thrown in the air but they don't really land because they're going to land in upcoming episodes so this episode is important on one hand, but not really funny by itself. I like the ending when uh, Dennis uh, kicks Mac out of the apartment, that's pretty funny. But apart from that, yeah, it's... Next is The Gang Gets Analyzed. Uh, yeah, this episode where the characters become caricatures of themselves from, for no goddamn reason. And there is this really weak uh, shrink character, which is kind of useless. Uh, they could have done it way better if they had tweaked some stuff. It's I like the part where, uh, towards the end, when uh, Charlie and Dennis start hitting each other and uh, all that stuff, and with uh, dishes, 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 but the whole analyzing part is... No, no, it doesn't work, and it's not good. Next, the gang exploits the mortgage crisis. So, uh, this episode has some good moments and some good ideas, but the whole uh, honey and vinegar thing do doesn't work at all in my opinion. It's not funny, it's kind of preposterous. Next is the gang gets invincible. Uh, what is this one about? Oh yeah, it's some, um, some dumb sport thing. Um, I, I don't understand American sports and they all seem the same to me. And as far as I'm concerned, um, Babe Ruth, LeBron James, and John Madden are the same person, so uh, it's, it's hard to me to vibe uh, with this one. And also there's the fucking Mike Poyles, which I hate, so uh, not a great episode despite having a bunch of cool moments, to be honest. Next is The Gang Gives Back, uh, so uh, another sports episode with the little kids. Uh, kinda the same here, the episode has some good moments and some good ideas, but overall it's a bit dull. Next, Charlie Catches a Leprechaun. This one has, has, has a bunch of good moments, the, the whole leprechaun thing, the 
fake Uber, uh, where are they <laughs> with the app that doesn't work? Yeah, yeah, it's we're yeah we're we're getting there. It's it's not a great episode, but it's it's got a lot of funny moments. The the ending is is pretty satisfying. Uh, next is the Gang Tens Bar. Oh, okay, so it's funny to see Dennis getting frustrated at everyone's antics. And uh, it's funny that they so far up their asses in season 12 that just doing their jobs and working feels like a trick to them. Other than that, I don't understand uh, how Valentine's Day is celebrated in America. It seems so different than here that I don't really understand what, what is happening and what are these cards uh, that they exchange. I, I don't get it. And also, I hate the ending. Uh, it, it kind of feels like they're trying to change Dennis, and it's kind of feels like a uh, retconning, and I, I really, I really don't like that. Next is the gang recycles their trash. So it's the title deserves a few points. It's a good title. Apart from that, the whole trash parts are not funny in my opinion. Uh, not not really good, uh, but I really like the parts with Frank and D. Uh, when they fight in the in the office of the gay businessman, and the whole thing with the gay businessman works much better this time than uh, in the gang sells out. So um, yeah, lots of uh, good D and Frank moments, but the parts with Charlie, Dennis, and Mac are very weak in my opinion. Next, the World Series defense. Um, another of these sports episodes. Uh, it's kind of a dumb plot, but it kind of works too, and the judge is funny. Uh, it's, it's a pretty good episode. Next is uh, The Gang Reignites the Rivalry. So, it's a mixed bag. Uh, it's always weird seeing Dennis like that, being obsessed with his past and his high school and college years. I don't understand. Uh, that, but it's so great seeing Frank high on this uh, legal amphetamines for kids that they have in America, and uh, the whole poison thing is really, really good and, and funny, and so uh, it's a mixed bag, but um, you know. Next is Mac and Dennis break up. Uh, it's a pretty good episode too, uh, in my opinion it's kind of plagued by this whole cats in the wall thing that is completely preposterous and I, <laughs> not funny at all, but all the interactions between the different characters and how the, the dynamics shift uh, from, from, from duo to, to trio to... Um, it's, it's funny, uh, it's, if, the, if it didn't have the, the cats in the wall and focused more on the interactions between the characters it would have been higher up in the list, but, um, you know. Next is Frank Falls Out the Window, so it's another one of these episodes where they use a bunch of stuff from the past and try to recycle it. Uh, they've done this a lot, and here it uh, doesn't really work. Uh, I mean, it's kind of cool to see these callbacks, but uh, it's the, the whole scene with, with the roommates, it doesn't really work in my opinion. The ending kind of pays off, but uh, Charlie believing that the window is a portal to 2006 is really funny though. And, and Mac being really annoyed at Charlie is really funny too, so it's uh, another mixed bag. Uh, next is Charlie Wants an Abortion. Uh, it's pretty solid for a first season episode, let's say that, let's get that out of the way. But it's still a first season episode, they're all trying to figure out the stuff and the characters are not fully formed yet. Uh, not a lot happens in this episode, it's, it's decent plot with funny moments, it's just you know, uh, first season, so it's it has to be kind of weak. It's uh, not bad by any means, but it's not really strong either. It, the, my favorite moment is when Dennis is like, I, I don't really have any convictions. That stuck with me. It's a it's a great moment. Uh, next is the gang gets held hostage. So you know, I hate the Mike Poils. I've said it a bunch of times already and I maintain it, but there are some good scenes, especially when um, all the scenes with uh, Danny, I mean Frank, uh, in the in the vents, in the um, 
you know the Half-Life things where you crawl and then when he meets Charlie in the in the ceiling it's uh, yeah it's, there are some good moments especially in, in the beginning with the, the dynamic between Mac Charlie and Frank is amusing and uh, <laughs> also when they don't understand what is Stockholm syndrome it's a good running gag next is Gun Fever, another one of these uh, first season episodes where not a lot happens and it's not really refined. It's not a bad episode by any means, but it's not a strong one. Uh, next is The Gang Goes to Hell. So this is a setup episode. They are throwing a lot of jokes in the air. Most of them, if not all, land in uh, part two. So uh, this is... Part 1 is not super entertaining by itself, there's some funny moments, some funny lines. I, I like when Dee punches the magician, for example, uh, but uh, yeah, it's very much a setup episode, so it's not extremely entertaining by itself. You have to watch the, the, the two episodes uh, to make it worth it. Next is Mac and Charlie White Trash. So the whole thing with the private swimming pool. What is this private swimming pool? It's weird as shit. I don't understand uh, what, what what is uh, about it. It's like some some weird ass country club thing. I, I don't get it. Uh, apart from that, the when they get stuck in the disaffected swimming pool, it's kind of funny. Uh, the moments with uh, Dennis and D at the public pool getting annoyed and shit, uh, pretty funny. And uh, it's once again, it's a pretty good episode. Um, certainly not bad, but not a strong one. Next is Charlie Kelly, King of the Rats. So pretty much the same thing here. Uh, I think that the famous spaghetti policy line is overrated in my opinion. I like some moments of it. Um, I, I, the ending is pretty good and uh, I like uh, the scene where uh, Frank and Charlie are in the, the Turkish bath in the hammam. Next is Charlie's mom has cancer. It's really amusing seeing Charlie really annoyed at the church when all the all the scenes when he's like the scene where it's, sit down no no get up no no you gotta sit down it's like ah <laughs> and then about the uh, the little crackers that uh, they eat uh, that it's supposed to symbolize Jesus. It's always funny when Charlie is riled up against religious shit. And, and it's a good character development because in the early seasons he was really Catholic and then he, he really grew out of it. And uh, yeah, the PDD's cameo as Dr. Jinx uh, is a pretty good one too. Uh, next is uh, Flowers for Charlie. So it's a nice episode. I know that it was made by the Game of Thrones team, that's why it has a different feel. Uh, than most of the episodes. It's not super funny, but it's a good idea. It has good moments. It has some good lines. I like when Dennis goes, Let, you just realize that you have two ears. Uh, it's, uh, you know, the ending is not bad, and it's an episode that is globally not bad. Next is Mac and Dennis Manhunters. It's, this one is a mixed bag also. The whole thing with Mac and Dennis becoming Manhunters doesn't work at all in my opinion. It's not really funny, it's just too, too goddamn weird to really work. But the parts uh, when Charlie and Dee uh, become cannibals, uh, this is really funny and entertaining to watch. So. Uh, some good moments and yeah mixed bag all together next is hundred dollar baby so uh, it's fun because it's intense the plot is really weak but the way that it's made makes it kind of work because they really turn up to 11 with all these amphetamines and shit uh, I haven't seen a million dollar baby so maybe I'm missing some references I don't know um, there's a lot of uh, episodes where they reference things that I haven't seen, so I may be missing some stuff. But yeah, it's a decent episode. Next is The Gang Exploits a Miracle. So yeah, this one too. Oh, it's the first time we see Rickety Cricket. That's pretty good. Um, what, what about it? Uh, it's, yeah, it's a weak plot, but it's done decently. So it pretty much works, as you would expect. Uh, uh, Charlie becoming one of these weird preachers is pretty entertaining. Am I gay for God? You betcha! 
Uh, but uh, yeah, apart from that, it's not, you know, it's a decent episode. Nothing special, really. Uh, next is The Gang Sold to Gas Crisis. The Gang Sold to Gas Crisis is pretty damn entertaining. I haven't got a lot to say about this one, actually. It's just a, a good episode. Next is Charlie Gets Crippled. So this one is important because it's the first time we see Frank. And it's funny to see Charlie turning into Lieutenant Dan from Forrest Gump. And yeah, it's a globally funny, good episode. Not a lot to say about this one either. Next is Charlie Got Molested. So this one has got props for featuring the McPoyles in a decent setting uh, they should not have been made recurring characters but in this episode they're good and yeah it has some twists and turns which work pretty good uh, the ending is satisfying it's a good plot and it's a good episode next is mac and dennis move to the suburbs so this one is a mixed bag uh the the directing and the editing is, is a bit too over the top uh, but it kind of works too. I mean the plot is dumb as shit. The plot is completely dumb and Mac becoming this kind of stay-at-home wife and Dennis becoming the, the breadwinner of the couple and having to, to commute uh, every day and shit. It's, it's so dumb. They could have just d done like one day each and you know when a uh, plot uh, problem could have been solved so easily it's uh, it breaks the suspension of disbelief in my opinion so it makes the episode not really work but there are some good moments there are some plot holes too it's not the only plot hole see also uh, mac letting the dog die doesn't really work because mac is usually an animal lover and it's usually dennis who doesn't like animals and doesn't give a shit about them so it's really weird and out of character and there's lots of funny lines but plot wise it's super weak so mixed bag next is the high school reunion so another setup episode most of the funny shit happens in the high school reunion part two uh, but it's good setup there's good lines there's uh there are some funny shit that happens that we learn Max's real name, etc. It's a uh, it's a good setup episode. Next is the gang hits the slopes. It's apparently a parody of 80s ski movies. Do you ever hear about those before? Me neither. Uh, I don't know if they made that up or if they really do exist, but I couldn't really find any info. Um, anyway, it's. Uh, weird and good at the same time. The whole thing with Dennis is weird as shit. Dennis is completely mental in this episode and in my opinion it doesn't work at all. Uh, but the parts with uh, the parts with Mac and D uh, and the, the old uh, ski guys, the, the party dudes, work. And uh, there are some twists and turns that really work in my opinion. And the running gag of the announcer that every, every time knows exactly what they're doing is, is really funny. So a uh, mixed bag, but pretty good. Next is the gang goes on family fight. Um, some good moments, some preposterous moments. Overall, it's a good episode. Uh, I especially like Mac never really understanding the game. It really works. And uh, yeah, that's it. Next is the gang finds a dead guy. So the whole dead guy thing is dumb, doesn't really work in my opinion, even if the cold open is good. Uh, but the whole parts with Charlie and D and Pop Pop and uh, you know D being like phobic of old people and Charlie finding the Nazi uniform and uh, that's pretty good. So uh, mixed bag, really good moments with Charlie and D in this one. Next is Mac kills his dad. So this one is a bit hard to watch for me because for some reason, uh, of all the characters that get their lives ruined just by <laughs> encountering the gang, uh, Luther McDonald is the one I, I feel the most sorry for. So uh, I, I don't like <laughs> I don't like him see being bashed like that. Uh, but apart from that, decent plot, some good moments, especially uh, when they go see the, the Ponderosa family. It's uh, 
it's pretty good at de arguing arguing with a little girl it's, it always gets me uh bill ponderosa is pretty funny in this episode and they all life his happy shirts is a good touch next is the gang runs for office yeah it's an episode with the gang try to delve into politics so obviously it's funny Next is Dennis looks like a registered sex offender. Another one of these weird American quirks. Uh, registered sex offenders is, is a weird thing that they have in the US. It's kind of like a Facebook of rape. Uh, I, I never really understood uh, what it was about. Um, but uh, the whole premise of the episode doesn't really make sense in my opinion because it's this, uh, this kind of posh uh, lady that go see uh, Frank and Charlie in their apartment and it's pretty it's pretty established that Frank and Charlie live in a shitty neighborhood so why would this lady be even here she doesn't fit and I don't think there's any kids to be protected in here it's like a slum so uh, it's 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 weird and also she wants the sex offender to move so it, it, it doesn't make any sense <laughs> he has to live somewhere uh, the the good, really good part is with uh, D and Dennis, uh, uh, and Dennis not realizing that D is <laughs> making do all this stupid shit intentionally. It's uh, it's a mixed bag, but it's not a bad episode by any means. Next is Mac bangs Dennis's mom. This <laughs> I, I haven't got a lot of stuff to say about this episode. It's a pretty solid, pretty funny episode. N not one of the best but a good one. Next is Who Got D Pregnant, the Halloween episode. So I'm not a fan of these flashbacks episodes. A lot of shows do that and it's never really good in my opinion. Uh, Charlie not knowing who the Phantom of the Opera is is, is, is always funny. They all have these <laughs> weird costumes that don't work and, and, and it's pretty funny and uh, the mystery itself is, um, yeah, it's kind of good. The cold open is good and uh, it's, it's a good episode. It's a good episode. What can I say? It's a good episode. Next is Max. Mom burns her house down. Mrs. McDonald and Mrs. Kelly have a good chemistry. What else can I say? It's a decent episode. Next is Max Big Break. So I love the cold open on this one. Uh, but the whole scenes with uh, um, Mac and Charlie learning to play some... Uh, I don't know, it's one of these faggy sports, uh, baseball on ice or some shit like that. Uh, this, it's really boring, but uh, the whole part with uh, Dennis and D making a podcast, really good. Next is Frank's Back in Business, a solid episode. <laughs> like, like, Charlie doesn't know how to read, but he'll adapt. He'll adapt to reading? <laughs> Yeah, pretty solid episode with lots, lots of good lines and, and uh, good moments. And I, I like seeing Frank's really realistic and down to earth view of business, uh, com contrary to uh, to Charlie's really uh, idealistic and even kind of like utopia of uh, how businesses work. Next is D gives birth. So it's one of these episodes full of callbacks and when a lot of former one of characters are recycled and it kind of works pretty good the beginning is pretty good the ending is pretty good it's overall a, a pretty good episode with lots of pretty good moments next is Dennis's double life so this one is uh, once again just like the gang tents bar it kind of feels like retconning the character of Dennis but there's it's full of good moments and it's it has pretty good rhythm and it has some surprises of course Mac is pretty great in this episode especially and yeah it's a solid episode even if it kind of left a bad taste in my mouth but I hope that in the beginning of season 13 there will be explanations so next is Mac and Charlie write a movie so uh, the whole part where uh, Mac and Charlie write a movie is hilarious and uh, <laughs> how Charlie gets so caught up in these weird ideas and, and Mac gets frustrated and angry at him but it, they can, it kind of works anyway and they have this really great chemistry and uh, it gets really wacky with the Indian guy at the end and <laughs> crime penetration, crime penetration. <laughs> 
um, the part with uh, with D trying to get a part of kind of kind of awkward and cringy, but uh, overall the episode works pretty well. Next is the gang goes to a water park. Um, it's it takes a long time to begin. You know, it's one of these episodes where. Uh, there's a, a long setup and it starts being funny in the middle, I'd say. Uh, I like the parts with uh, Dennis and the little girl. They're really good. And um, what else? That's about it. <laughs> uh, where's, the, where's the north? Uh, up? Up? <laughs> Next is uh, the gang misses the boat. So, lots of good parts. In my opinion, Dennis goes a bit too much up to 11 and it kind of breaks my suspension of disbelief. It's it's funny, but it's too much. Uh, but it's funny. I, I love this part when I was like, oh yeah, I'm talking to myself, but it's just because I got shit to say, you know? And uh, lots of lots of good moments. The, the whole thing with Charlie and Dee starting deaf poetry is hilarious. And Dennis getting really aggravated at them is, is really really funny too. Um, Mac and Frank don't really shine in this episode, but it's fine. Uh, I, I I I love when I love when Dennis gets uh, angry at, uh, at at Frank and Charlie for for being worm sucking idiots. There's some really great lines, a bunch of really great lines in this episode. The dialogue is great. Next is Max banging the waitress. Uh, it's a uh, it's it's solid episode with uh, some some twists and turns uh, between the the characters and the, this weird uh, friendship love triangle between Dennis, Charlie, and Mac is uh, is really entertaining. Next is the gang wrestles for the troops. So um, it's a mixed bag this one but it's got some really great moments you know it's uh, a lot of dull parts but it's compensated by really high highlights especially when Frank meets the soldier and gives him the jean shorts and, and all and all that all this scene uh, with the kiss from a rose is really great and the ending of course the ending is amazing uh, next is making Dennis Reynolds a murderer it's not hugely funny, but it's pretty consistently entertaining. I I, I love the part with uh, Mac and Dennis where uh, Mac does these pointless impressions of movies. <laughs> it's uh, it's pretty great. Um, next is Charlie has cancer. So uh, this was originally the the pilot episode, but it's it has been reworked a bit, and uh, now it's uh, season one, episode four, and it is pretty good. Um, of course, it's really early shit, so uh, the the gang is not really what they are as we know them. The the characters are not fully formed yet. But it's an episode with a bunch of good ideas and it's I mean Charlie really shines here. It's really one of his big episodes. And um, it's really a good episode for a season one episode. Next is America's Next Stop Patty's Billboard Model Contest. So I love the twists uh, in the, in this episode and it's it's funny um, uh, how Dennis gets completely worked up once again and Mac is really good in this episode especially Mac yeah next is the gang broke D uh, it's it's already a classic it's really great idea really well done and uh, yeah the, 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 the jab at uh, unfunny female comedians like, like Amy Schumer uh, is, is pretty pretty well done it's it's subtle but it gets the point across and uh, yeah it's a really great episode next is the gang bits bugs uh, so once again I, I couldn't be bothered to check if uh, the Wade Boggs person was a uh, real athlete or a, a fictional one that was made up for the show uh, but the episode is pretty good uh, it's uh, it's a bottle episode because it takes place 
I mean, 95% of the episode takes place in a plane. Everyone's good in there, everyone in there has really good moments, and it's pretty consistently funny from start to finish. The rhythm is satisfying. It's a really solid episode, this one. Next is the gang gets stranded in the woods. So it's it's interesting um, to... It's, I think it's one of the episodes where we really see the, the personality of some uh, some of the characters, uh, especially um, Frank, Mac and Dee. Uh, the parts with Charlie and Dennis are not really special. They're funny, but not great. But the, this whole part with... Uh, with the, the, the weird the dynamic is, uh, getting established between Mac, uh, D, and Frank in, in the woods is uh, yeah, it's it's pretty great. It's it's uh, it's something different than what they usually do, and it works pretty well. And the the parts with the trucker are funny too, of course. So next is Charlie McDennis 2 Electric Boogaloo. It's not as funny as the first. Uh, Charlie McDennis episode. They've done a lot of modifications to the game and, it's, and it seems even more weird and more complicated uh, than the first time and maybe a little too much this time but yeah it, it works it's um, the plot is dumb in my opinion but it's pretty consistently funny and it has some it has some really good moments so next is who pooped the bed uh, so <laughs> it's uh, the, the the enigma is is really funny and it, it it gets you on the edge of your seat from start to finish. It's a consistent episode, consistently funny, and uh, I, I I love the ending. Next is Dennis and Dee's mom is dead. So the what up episode with the party mansion. It could be higher if there wasn't fucking Bruce Mathis. Cause I hate Bruce. And the fact that he's here and the whole thing with Bruce is really dumb and really doesn't work in my opinion. But uh, the whole party mansion thing is, is hilarious. Uh, the, the moment when Mac realizes that he only has two numbers in his phone, it's uh, Charlie and Dennis. And when they realize that uh, all, all their friends are alienated or dead or you know the, the part with the, the poet is really great too when they read the, the diary it's um, lots of great moments could be higher if it wasn't for fucking Bruce Mathis uh, next is Patty's Pub the worst bar in Philadelphia so this one references uh, Misery which I know because I've read it and it's a uh, pretty good episode, a pretty good parody of Stephen King's Misery and uh, <laughs> when, when D calls the journalist a faggot because he orders a Chardonnay it's, it's yeah, it's lots of great moments um, the plot is kinda over the top and a bit dumb but lots of great dialogue in there so it's uh, it works next is the gang buys a boat I love the feel of this episode. It's quite different than what they usually do, uh, but it, it really works and uh, D uh, really shines in this episode, I think. Charlie's pretty great, Dennis too. I don't know, the, the beginning is really great when they are trying to buy a PDD style shrimping vessel for extremely cheap and uh, the whole episode has a great rhythm, I think. It's it's relaxed, but it's you know slow and steady, and it's a special episode in my opinion. So next is Frank sets Sweet D on fire. Oh, there was a I think it was a click hole uh, article a few days ago, which was uh, Facebook uh, fights against fake news by making all the fake news really happen. Or something like that and it really reminded me of this episode which is an interesting take on journalism and sensationalism and the press and the news and and you know the importance of truth and ethics and all that shit and it's it's really really you know funny and it's just lots of great moments uh, from start to finish and it features one of my favorite minor one-off characters, uh, dancing guy, 
and uh, the only thing that's weird is this uh, public access TV thing I didn't really understand what that was it kind of like YouTube but it get broadcast I, I, I couldn't figure out if this was a real thing in the US or if it was a uh, created uh, for the show uh, it's, it's a weird concept but overall good episode next is the great recession so Frank is really great here uh, uh, Frank is super entertaining in this episode and I mean they're all pretty good uh, Charlie D and uh, Mac and Dennis a bit less but you know it's uh, it's a funny episode and it's kind of a classic we are crap people now <laughs> so next is the gang dines out it's also pretty much a classic at this point and it takes a bit of time to really get into gear but uh, when it gets good it gets really good these parts are a bit awkward and a bit cringy but it really pays off at the end when she's pretty awesome and you know, Dennis is really, really great in this episode. It's really one of the best Dennis episodes, in my opinion. Next is Mac is a Serial Killer. Oh, another really great episode. I love this one. It's a bit slow, sadly. And, and of course, the parts with the training are really awkward. But Dennis and Dee especially are really funny here. Uh, Frank, too over the top with his chainsaw. This take a couple points off the mark but overall you know Charlie and his weird lawyerisms also kind of so so but yeah Dennis and Dee are really great in this episode and they, they make the whole thing shine uh, next is Reynolds versus Reynolds the serial defense so um, this one is also a classic uh, I don't like the ending, it's it's a bit predictable and not really satisfying and I wish that they would have found a, a better ending and it's, it's a bit slow but it has so many great lines I mean the whole trial part is amazing what else is to say, the, the whole science bitch the science is a liar sometimes it's great moments next is Mac and Dennis by a timeshare so just seeing Frank in the coil is worth it makes the whole ep episode worth it. Um, it once again it's a repetitive episode where not a lot of stuff happens but you know uh, Florida been there not physically amazing line next is the gang spies like US I, I love how they get, you know, paranoid at this just fish factory just because it's there and <laughs> how they get riled up and how they get each other riled up and how the paranoia builds up from nothing. It's great and I mean seeing D getting hurt from start to finish was also really entertaining. The whole cream pie thing is really well done. It's the plot is a bit dumb, but it's a really good episode. Next is the gang group dates. So pretty good episode, except for Dennis, in my opinion, getting obsessed with this raiding thing and getting too crazy. Doesn't it be too much? A bit too unrealistic and a bit too crazy. But you know the whole thing with um, Frank, Charlie, and Mac is great. They're great. They're really, really, really good. Next is Dennis and D go on welfare. Classic episode. Oh, did someone get addicted to crack? <laughs> uh, it, the premise is is funny. The, the plot is is a bit dumb once again, but lots of great lines frank rewarding charlie for stealing his credit card is really a great moment next is a charlie rules the world pretty consistently funny episode and charlie is so great in this episode he is amazing he it's really if you like charlie it's really one of the best charlie episodes and the whole weird ass moments with Dennis in the float tank 
uh, when he became, becomes like God and shit and with the turtle it, it's you know lots of good moments here Dennis is weird fake British accent is crazy amazing this uh, when it's good in the flotation tank but bad in real life is such a clever and funny touch it's uh, it's an episode with lots of qualities next is a very sunny Christmas so that I say that I count as one because it's really one long episode and not uh, part one and part two it's uh, constant it drags on for a little too long in my opinion it should have ended uh, when you know the the whole thing with uh, Frank's old business partner uh, taking all the, the gifts and running away in the cool dash it probably should have ended there and of course the the ending when they're throw rocks at trains together and have a great time is a highlight uh, Charlie getting crazy at the did you fuck my mom Santa Claus is a bit too much in my opinion a bit too up to 11 but apart from that apart from that um, the robot chicken like sequence in, in Frank's dream is pretty good uh, when Dennis goes oh you go fuck yourself and you fat fucking ass it's one of my favorite lines of the whole show lots of great moments the rhythm is off but the plot is good and the dialogue is good so got two out of three elements next is the gang saves the day this one is really interesting in my opinion as it really shows the, the personalities of the characters I like how Dennis's fantasy is really like a real fantasy and it, it really looks like a, a fantasy that a person would have and uh, Frank's is, is pretty realistic too and on the other hand the daydreams happening in the heads of Mac and Dee are completely mental and, and completely not at all like a real fantasy and of course Charlie going full Disney is uh, is one of the best moments uh, in the show probably with all the, the rats it's not really really funny but it's it interesting if you like the characters you know if you've been caught up in the show for years it's uh, it's a nice episode especially for the for the fans Next is the gang gives Frank an intervention. So it's it's funny to see how they really don't understand what an intervention is, and the the whole thing with uh, Gail the snail. Uh, it's really. <laughs> um, I'm sexually active, mom. Deal with it. You're 33 years old. You're supposed to be sexually active. You're not supposed to be fondling your uncle under the table. <laughs> Uh, it's one of my favorite lines ever and you know uh, Mac being obsessed with uh, the, the the aunt um, I mean uh, or sister-in-law or whatever she is uh, is is really you know he's in his meal period and it's uh, it's pretty funny next is Mac Day country Mac one of my favorite uh, one-off minor characters love country Mac and it's it takes a bit long to start this one too but it's got so many great moments and I mean country Mac is so great and the the ending is not really satisfying but so funny so the next is Patty's pub home of the original kitten mittens uh, what else it's the shotgun episode what else can I say about it it's maybe an interesting uh, reflection on the culture of patenting and copywriting everything. A hey, fine brothers, but uh, yeah, it's a, it's a funny episode with a nice rhythm and some good scenes with the Jew lawyer. Next is Old Lady House, a situation comedy. So this episode is a blend of two great things. The scheming 
of Dennis Reynolds and the chemistry be between uh, Mrs. McDonald and Mrs. Kelly. And this makes for a great episode. Everyone's at the top of, her, of their game here. Um, it gets a few points taken off for featuring Uncle Jack. I hate Uncle Jack, so if he's there, I enjoy the episode less. But um, yeah, everyone's everyone's great in, in, in there. <laughs> it's, uh, Mac being completely oblivious to uh, his mother, not giving a shit about him. Uh, the the prayer scene of uh, Bonnie Kelly in the middle of the episode is what I imagine my mom does all the time. Uh, <laughs> Bonnie Kelly reminds me of my mother. And the twist ending is delightful, even if it's not really a twist and you could have seen it coming. Uh, next is the gang gets quarantined, so this one is uh, a gem on a lot of accounts. The only downside is that it's a bit repetitive and Frank becoming crazy and wanting to be pure is a bit too over the top and kind of breaks the suspension of disbelief. That is a bit sad. It's um, they, they went too far with Frank's delirium, but uh, everything with the four other um, gang members is <coughs> is really <coughs> But everything else with the four other gang members is really, really great. Uh, the reveal is important for the lore, and the whole Backstreet Boys thing is... <laughs> I mean, everything comes together quite well. The ending is... Uh, not so hard, not so soft. Not so, not so bad, not too great, uh, but um, yeah, 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 lots of amazing scenes in this episode. Uh, Dennis being completely in denial that he looks like he's gonna die is amazing, and Charlie not understanding what a quarantine is is amazing. A great, great episode, I've watched it a ton of times. Next is Sweet D has a heart attack, a very classic episode. It's the episode when uh, the most famous uh, Always Sunny scene happens when with Pepe Silvia and Carol! Carol! There is no Carol in HR! It's an amazing episode in many regards, but in my opinion, it's plagued by having too many uh, references to other material, uh, especially movies. If I understood correctly, this episode references heavily um, two 80s movies. One is called How to be Successful, and, and the other one is uh, How to Fly in a Cuckoo's Nest. And, okay, I, I, I heard about this the latter, didn't even hear about the former. I don't know what this uh, whole Dig Bao Bao thing and it I got a feeling that it kind of hinders me from uh, appreciating the uh, episode to its full extent but on the other hand if you need to know the material that is referenced to understand what is funny about the reference then it's not comedy it's parody and it's not what I'm watching TV shows for especially this one so the whole thing in the psychiatric hospital with the big Indian chief and all that, for me it's garbage and uh, it, it's uh, wasted potential for an episode that could have been one of the best if they had had more uh, ideas instead of just uh, referencing obscure movies from the 80s for no goddamn reason. But still, Sweet D's heart attack and the whole mailroom thing and Dennis and D being obsessed by exercise and taking as many shortcuts as they can. Still lots of great moments. Next is uh, the gang gets a new member. So this uh, relies on a formula that has become classic at this point in uh, the show, is that the gang is basically kind of like a symbiotic entity and uh, the five of them are kind of codependent of each other and they all work on such a fragile equilibrium that if anything comes and, and perturbates it, then everything falls apart. We've seen this, for example, in, in Mac and Dennis breakup or a um, bunch of other episodes so far. And this one does it pretty well uh, with uh, Schmitty, who is by all accounts a normal person, normal human being with normal actions and reactions and, and so he's completely uh, breaking the group's dynamic apart 
and the, Charlie's reaction is amazing. <laughs> Div wanted to become a drama teacher in high school is so funny, uh, and the whole the whole dynamic with Schmidty is is really really funny because it really shows how incredibly dysfunctional they all are when they are uh, <laughs> when a functional person like Schmidty is included in the group. Next uh, is the gang hits the road. So I've read somewhere that it, this is kind of a metaphor on how uh, the gang will never be able to leave Philadelphia. And yeah, it, you could see it like that. I, I love that when Mac just throws a bottle at the guy on the bicycle for some reason. This scene really stuck with me as it's, it's become one of my favorite moments ever. And the whole the whole thing with the hitchhiker and they're all oh and when and th I think it's uh, D who pukes out the window and it comes in Max face because they all have the window rolled up. I mean it's when they are uh, when they are at the gypsy market and they buy fruit for Charlie. So many great moments in this episode. Uh, overall, the plot is really basic and not a great plot. Uh, but so many great moments in this episode, lots of great bits of dialogue, and everyone gives a really good performance, so it's uh, it's pretty great. Uh, next is Frank's Pretty Woman. So it's once again it's a really thin plot, really simple plot. But the actress that they chose to to play the part of Frank's Pretty Woman, she's so amazing. She's the the the. Um, her dialogue is great, and the way she acts and talks is so great. It's such a great, um, you know, episode centered around a one-off character. It's really, really neat. Uh, next is D. Reynolds shaping America's youth. So this is the follow-up of the gang get a new member, and it's pretty much as funny, albeit for really different reasons, of course. The reason why this episode is so funny is especially Lethal Weapon 5. Lethal, we Lethal Weapon 5. So it comes out of nowhere right in the middle of the episode and it is so funny and so great and all that shit with Mac in blackface changing roles at the middle of the film and the, the cheesiness and it's um, it's a great sweated film uh, admittedly I haven't seen any of the Lethal Weapon movies but I've seen this one five uh, and also six a bunch of times and yeah 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 the the, the whole thing the juggalo the blackface debate the everything the beginning is great the ending is great it's a really really good episode Next is the high school reunion part two, the gang's revenge. So the setup has been done, and now everything is really happening, and it's really good rhythm. Lots of really funny moments. The dance off at the end is amazing. Every piece of the puzzle come into play and into place really neatly. We see the return of Schmidt in this episode, and he has like only two lines, but he's, he's perfect. It's also one of my favorite moments. Uh, in the whole show, when he when he comes and come, goes uh, goes away with the girl, it's really really neat. Uh, next is how Mac got fat. So these flashback episodes, I'm not a fan of that. I'm, I'm it's not you all that Citizen King shit. It's been done. But if you disregard the the scenes with the priest that are kind of awkward and not super funny, kind of cringy. Uh, there's a great story in here and everyone thinking that they have peaked and that they are at their best peak performance that this is what peak performance looks like and that they have finally achieved success and so they decide to keep doing the same thing because it's doing this that has led them to success which is a valid thought and a, a really good strategy except that none of them is able to do that, they are all completely, except Charlie, who's doing his best, but apart, apart from him, they all, none of them is even remotely capable of just knowing what they did right, and so they did, and so they do everything wrong, but up to 11, and it's really, it's really, really, really amusing, 
and Frank trying to come up with plans and just not knowing what a plan is, is it's pretty hilarious. Next is PTSD. So that was an episode that surprised me a bit and in a good way. Uh, all the parts with the um, VR video game, not really interesting in my opinion, but all the rest. Dennis wanting to become a stripper for the stupidest reason ever is, is hilarious and the whole thing that happens with him and Charlie is really really funny. Max Dream uh, and, uh, and of course Dee's devious plan is that really comes together at the end. Just lots of great things in this, in this episode, lots of great moments. Good beginning, good ending, good plot, good everything. Really we are in the excellent zone. Uh, next is The Gang Gets Racist, surprisingly solid for the first ever episode of a TV show, surprisingly solid. And yeah, the whole plot is really great, it's well written, you got some twists and turns, you got some hilarious lines by Max, it turns out you are actually related. <laughs> this is an amazing line, uh, the, the ending is pretty good. Everything about this episode is good and especially considering that it's season one episode one Really a solid episode and that's how I got hooked on the show from the very beginning Next is Mac and Charlie die part one another one that is really great with a really great rhythm and the whole thing with the wedding dress is really funny with the poppers and everything and everyone is super funny in, in this episode lots of great moments, lots of great lines, the plot is good the dialogue is funny, everything about this episode is really good next is the Nightman Cometh so is there anything more to say about this episode that hasn't been said before? I doubt it, it's really iconic the plot is pretty good the songs are great, Charlie becoming really aggravated at everyone misinterpreting uh, his musical plot and, and, uh, and dialogue and everything is, is really, really funny. Next is Charlie and Dee find love. So this one is kind of a spoof of a classic uh, French movie from the 90s, I think, uh, which uh, is, um, uh, how would I translate it, a, a dinner for dumbasses? Anyway, um, it's uh, it's an interesting one. It's a bit different of what they usually do, I think. The intro is great, and yeah, there are some surprises. Uh, Charlie is like a big Charlie in this episode, and it's good that they made one episode when we really see that he's an awful person because most of the time it's more like hinted at and suggested and there we really see how awful an asshole he is. And yeah, this episode has some absolutely classic Mac and D moments, some really great Dennis moments and uh, Charlie is at Pick Charlie. I don't even remember what Frank does in, in this episode. Is he even in there? <laughs> no. The only gripe I would have with this episode is that the actress that they chose to play uh, Charlie's love interest, the Taft girl, is insanely hot. Like she's really attractive and gorgeous, and it's it's maybe a bit too much, and it's it's really distracting in my opinion. Um, the first time I saw the episode, I could not concentrate on the plot or the dialogue or, or anything else. I had to watch it a few times. To really understand what was going on and, and what it was the plot, because I kept being distracted by, by, by this girl. Next is Frank Retires. This one has an amazing cold open. One of the best. Maybe the best cold open of the whole show, in my opinion. And some absolutely classic Mac moments. Mac is insanely good in this episode with this whole uh, double crossing, uh, playing both sides thing. Dennis is really good too with his next level scheming, is amazing. Dee has good moments too, Charlie and Frank are all, they're all really great in this episode. They all have really good moments and the plot is really clever too. I mean, clever, maybe not clever, but it's a really good plot, really well crafted. Definitely a great episode. Next is Wolf Cola, a public relations nightmare. So. This is why we had to wait for you to go to Bed Bath & Beyond? Yes, bitch. 
uh, one of <laughs> a really great episode about the the, the the shallowness of the media and uh, and how awful 99% of PR is and how it's just bullshit. Some really, really funny moments with Frank, D, and Dennis. Uh, the whole part with uh, Mac and Charlie and uh, Fight Milk not so good in my opinion they they, they kind of turned the quality of the episode down except when except the, the commercial tape the advertisement that they make for uh, the new uh, fight milk is really <laughs> superb next is the gang goes jihad one of the best early episodes the best of the first three seasons it's got a good plot it's got plenty of good jokes like charlie not understanding what israel is and you know it's got a solid rhythm it's it's got a funny beginning it's got this spicy social commentary that is not too hard not too soft that they do so well and it's just a great episode from start to finish Next is Dennis Gets Divorced. Ah, Dennis Gets Divorced has a special place in my heart because I think it's um, at this point that I really got definitely hooked into the show and that it turned uh, for me from a good show to one of my favorites ever. And yeah, seasons five and six is when I really got hooked up uh, on It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia and this episode was one of the final nails in the in the coffin so to say so to speak and it's just a great episode the plot is absolutely dumb but it works and it's got so many funny moments not a lot of funny lines but just situations you know it's well, it's situational comedy. It's, a, it's the perfect sitcom episode. It's one of the more, it's one of the most uh, sitcom-esque episodes that they've ever done, and they've done it really well. Next is Charlie McDennis, the Game of Games, another classic. That game that they've invented it's, is so representative of who they are and uh, their personalities and their lives that it's it's great to the point where it's almost a show within a show. And yeah, it's absolutely great episode. The, the ending is legendary and the whole game thing is really brilliant. And it's, uh, yeah, it really encapsulates uh, the spirit of the game. Next is The Gang Goes to Hell Part 2. The Gang Goes to Hell Part 2 has so many great moments. It really packs a punch. There's even some emotional scenes between them. It's really rare in this show. There's almost a sweet moment when they are flooded and think they're gonna die. And all the work that was laid uh, in the, the first part here pays off. And it pays off really well. And the whole thing has so many layers. Uh, it seems inspired uh, heavily by Jean-Paul Sartre's uh, Huit Clos. Uh, it's really done in a sunny in Philadelphia way and they really appropriated the concept you know it's really them and it's really really funny and everything about this episode is great next is the Dennis system one of the classics from season five the Dennis system of course it's well Dennis is my favorite character never before have I identified with a fictional character quite as much as I do with Dennis Reynolds. Him and myself have so much in common that it's a bit frightening sometimes. And so this episode that is centered around Dennis obviously pleases me greatly. And the fact that nobody really understands his system is really hilarious. They all try to imitate him and they all fail miserably and it really annoys him and makes him furious and this whole dynamic is absolutely entertaining to the maximum. Great episode. Next is Pop Pop The Final Solution, a delightful title for a delightful episode. Everything in there is pretty damn great and Max's weird obsession with the Da Vinci Code is really entertaining to, to watch and the, the whole plot 
the whole plot is really good and the, it flows really well from part to part and yeah overall great episode next is the gang goes to the Jersey Shore so this episode has a special place in my heart uh, because it, it reminds me of my favorite meme that was huge when I started getting into memes and, and going on 4chan more than 10 years ago and that meme was my name is John remember this one hey faggots my name is John and I hate every single one of you all of you are fat retarded no life to spend every single day looking at stupid ass pictures you are everything bad in the world huh honestly has any of you got an any pussy etc etc and I think that this meme was the meme that got me into memes and that, that hooked me and that got me really into meme culture and the picture of the dude and his bitch was people from the Jersey Shore so to me it matters maybe weird but that's how it is that's how it is on this bitch of an earth and it's one of these episodes when they start with a premise and they all completely flip their opinions they've done that a bunch of times so there you see at the beginning Dennis and Dee love the Jersey Shore and they want to go there and Mac Charlie and Frank are not convinced and they don't really want to go there and so Dennis and Dee convince them and so obviously Dennis and Dee have a bad time and the other three have a good time it's uh, it's the switcheroo that they've done a, a bunch of times and it's done really well here the episode has a great rhythm, the jokes land well, it's got some great lines. Charlie, do not try and swim to Europe. Do, do not. Lots of great moments. That scene when Dennis and Dee are in this uh, hospital corridor and they try to imagine uh, the life of the girl that is in front of them. That is absolutely iconic. And overall, a great episode, full of amazing moments. Next is As Kickers United, Mac and Charlie join a cult. So this episode, at first sight, may suffer from a bit of flanderization, you know? Dennis is almost too devious and manipulative, and Mac is significantly dumber than the usual. Uh, but it still works because it's a great plot. And there are lots of funny lines and D is really brilliant in this episode. Uh, D has, has a really great part in this episode. And Frank's weird obsession with this shit sandwich is really outlandish and really stupid, but it works. Um, so many so many great moments. And uh, I really appreciate uh, seeing Rex back. Uh, I love Rex and uh, in this episode he is absolutely perfect. Next is the anti-social network. This episode was actually based on, on a real event that actually happened to Glenn Howerton uh, that got shushed uh, in, a, in a bar and he, he, he was so pissed off that he decided to make an episode about it. I think that knowing that only makes the thing better. It's a really, really funny episode. Uh, with lots of you know twists and turns and uh, the plot really bounces from place to place the whole scene in the gin bar says, God I hate gin D you bitch classic line absolutely iconic what else can I say it's a super funny episode and I love the premise I love the plot I love the dialogue everything about this is absolutely great Next is Sweet D Gets Audited. That scheme is one of the best they've ever pulled. And it's really, really, it's funny, it's dark, it's bold, it's everything that is great about it. It's always sunny in Philadelphia. Maybe the biggest flaw is that it takes quite a bit of time to really start and get into third or fourth gear and um, It starts a bit slow, but when it goes into the paint It goes really hard into the motherfucking paint and it's delightful Next is the gang gets trapped this episode has an absolutely retarded plot but it has so many good lines it's so many 
good moments and everything about it is absolutely great except for the plot which is absolutely retarded but yeah d, d you gangly uncoordinated bitch i am not getting hot tied over your lack of grace uh, maybe my favorite line ever and everyone is great in there charlie just barging in the house and not getting caught somehow Mac, in what he's with his talking walking and this I'm a Swedish plumber, I come to fix your pipes. Just next is the gang turns black. So, this episode has a special place in my heart because when I was a kid, I was obsessed with the Quantum Leap, it was my favorite show ever, and I, I watched it obsessively for years. And I was really into that shit. So when they referenced that, I was like, I hadn't heard about this show in 20 years. And now it's a full episode full of references in there. And a Scott Bakula cameo. And Scott Bakula has a song. It's orgasmic for me. And the songs are plenty and they're great. The social commentary is subtle and not in your face and it does not get in the way of the episode a lot of time I want to say 95% of the time at least when filmmakers or people who make any kind of fiction whether it is TV shows or video games books whatever people who insert social commentary and politics in fiction usually completely ruin the fiction like 95% of the time it ends up sounding completely stupid or heavy-handed or even even like propaganda of some sorts and in It's Always Sunny it never happens they never make the social commentary get into the way of comedy it's right it's far in the background and it's just there to add a little nuance to the episode and it works perfectly so this episode is brilliant i was really apprehensive of it when they announced it and it was really a great surprise to see that they made it absolutely the best that they could next is psycho Pit returns so this one is so simple and so brilliant at the same time it's this whole story of this dude who everyone was afraid of him and turns out it was just because of rumors and he never did anything and I've never really did anything wrong and the reason he was in the psychiatric hospital is because he was de just uh, depressed and, and you know it's such a subtle episode this may be the most subtle of all the episodes they have done and it's brilliant it's really refreshing because a lot of times they go really ham and they go really you know rum ham and they go really heavy-handed in the in the grotesque and and usually it undermines uh, the comedy of the show which this show is so brilliant because it's so realistic all the characters are like us and our friends and our families just just a, a, a tiny notch less concerned with social norms and less afraid of getting caught and, and having their lives ruined by their stupid choice and reckless behaviors but their endeavors their, their personalities their who they are at inside it's really it's really us it's really real people and psycho pete is maybe the realest of all the minor characters you know it's nice when they have completely grotesque characters like artemis but psycho pete i don't know i think it's a great episode i think the plot is brilliant and that scene <laughs> when dennis and d talk about taxes uh, it's oh my god it's delightful and the thing with the the frog kid of course which comes back from the side um, from the shrink episode uh, it's great next is D made a smut film so despite the fact that I don't once again understand all the references 
I have no idea what Cinemax is, never heard of it. And Richard uh, Greco, never heard of him either. I haven't been bothered to check if he was a real person or a fictional character that they invented. Um, but I, I may be missing some uh, because of that. But still, it is amazing. It's a reflection on, on you know, art and the industry of art and entertainment and it's so well done and it's so funny at the same time Ongo Gablogian is delicious Mac is really great in this episode Frank is awesome and yeah they're all they're all good there's cricket like cricket pretty much everything is timed just right and the ending is not really satisfying I really wish they have found a better ending, but it's still a really, really great episode. Next is Gun Fever 2, still hot. So this episode is just like the Jersey Shore one, when they completely flip uh, their perspectives and it really shows on one hand how shallow and arrogant they all are, and on the other hand how the issue of uh, gun violence and gun control and all that is so complicated that it's basically impossible to really have an opinion on it without being a retarded asshole. This situation has probably happened to all of us a fuck ton of times. We have this opinion that is not really informed but we like having this opinion so we we try and push it to our friends and then they come up with some arguments so we try to do research and to really come up with the facts and, and the evidence to prove our opinion and while doing this we learn things that we didn't know and that completely change our opinion and by learning more facts and more evidence we realize how wrong we were and this, I don't know, this happens to me almost every day and it's great because it makes you evolve and so this whole episode counts as character development I guess and it's a really clever take on the gun debate probably the cleverest I've ever seen and it is really funny when when he goes oh wait you you light you light one bitch on fire and everybody freaks out this this scene is so great lots of great moments in this episode what else is to say the plot is good the dialogue is good the action is good everything is good about it next is the gang tries desperately to win an award once again super funny episode with references to the fact that it's always sunny in Philadelphia never won an award and so there is a parallel between the fictional bar and the real TV show and it's funny because it's a callback to the origins of It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia which originally was called It's Always Sunny in Hollywood and was about actors and so it's kind of like they went back to their roots and also shared a message and the way that they share this message is extremely funny and, and we have two songs by Charlie which are both great especially the second one obviously and you know I there's one of my favorite lines to it oh stop this is not will they or won't they this is I know they won't and I know I don't want them to <laughs> I love this line so much and oh and Z is great in there he is one of my favorite minor characters he's got he's, he's on screen for like five seconds and he's got like one line and a half but his delivery and his presence are so brilliant it makes me wish that we saw him more often Z for the win and next is hero or hate crime so another really funny episode with lots of twists and turns with the ass pounder 3000 or is it 4000 uh, doesn't matter it will Everything about it is great. The, the 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 start, the the end, the development, the the arbiters which change because they're they're too nice, and the, the the whole thing, it really it's really really them. It's really really, it's always sunny at its core. 
it's this it's this bunch of really shallow people who have these really vain occupations but when you look closelier uh, their desires are not as dumb as they seem and it reminds me of that episode um, I don't remember which one thin limes versus thick limes uh, Sweet D gets audited and it reminds me of that scene when Dennis says I, I, I don't want real power I just want the illusion of power and that that whole thing with the, the scratch ticket is like the they don't want real money, just the illusion of money. And it's it's so great when they openly admit that they prefer fake things to real ones because it's less responsibility. We all hate responsibilities, right? And it's they're so human in there. They're so like us. Next is Frank Reynolds' Little Beauty. So it's another episode that explores one of the typically USA American quirks and this is child pageants. Illegal as shit here. And somehow there, I mean, it's the land of freedom and they can do whatever they want so they can put kids, you know, slam them with makeup and put them in bikinis and make them parade. And of course, this goes well with the universe of Patty's Pub. And it's a really good episode. It's not even centered around the child pageant, which is kind of basically the decor of the episode rather than the, the central point of the plot. And that's a good thing, obviously. These uh, mother trauma expressing itself in, in the most entertaining way possible. That whole thing with the mortician. I love that mortician. He's, he's perfect, the way he's introduced. Artemis at the mixing board is great. They're all pretty great in this episode. Of course, for most of the episode, it's Frank that steals the show. It's an episode that I guess surprised me by how funny and well-made it was and how they brilliantly avoided all the traps of the subject. Next is Charlie Work. Charlie Work is such a an amazing episode the way it's filmed the plot the dialogue the, every detail about it is brilliant uh, Frank and the recorder Dennis just, all right all right all right the, and yeah this whole scheme with the steaks and the chickens and everything about it is perfect it's really really one thing is that the ending is not as satisfying as it could have been. The, the ending is a bit lackluster and it's understandable because with an episode so intense in comedy as well as in action, I, I understand that they couldn't come up with a better ending. Because obviously the episode was so full of goodness that it was hard to, to top that. But it really, it's one of the most amazing pieces of television that i ever seen. It's, it's absolutely brilliant from start to finish. And yeah, the, the whole part when it's just one uh, scene uninterrupted is absolutely brilliant and really, really funny. And really well made, well thought out, well done. Really 10 out of 10. And the last, my favorite episode of all time, the best in my opinion, It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia episode is The Waitress is Getting Married. Of course, it has my favorite scene in the whole show. Yeah, it's the, I really think it's my favorite scene in the whole show. It's when Mac and Dennis make a dating profile for Charlie. And it's just, I've watched and rewatched this scene hundreds of times, and it still makes me laugh as much as the first time. It is so great. The milk steak, the, the, when he wants to look like Sherlock Holmes, everything is, and the, the, just the looks and the way that Mac and Dennis get aggravated 
you know and it's really subtle and it's really well done and it's really funny and everything about it is, is perfect uh, these shallowness and, and chronic uh, envy of other people it's the, she wants success but she doesn't want to work for it it's the tragedy of her life and everything yeah everything about this episode is so great especially a thing that is really important for me and that most of the time it's what Sonny lacks most and that is rhythm uh, a lot of episodes probably the majority of episodes of It's Always Sunny have good plots, good dialogues, funny actions, funny moments, but the pacing is off. That's really It's Always Sunny, it's Philadelphia's biggest flaw. The, the pacing and the rhythm often is off, and this episode has perfect pacing, perfect rhythm. It goes from scene to scene in a uninterrupted flow of, of comedy and it's really well constructed the script is perfectly timed and that is really what makes this episode the best in my opinion this and that scene when they make the dating profile for Charlie little green ghouls man well that was it that was the entire list, the whole It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia episodes ranked from worst to best. I don't know you guys, but I cannot wait for season 13. And even if it seems like a lot of seasons for any show, it works because there, there are only 10 episodes per season is, is good is probably the best number of episodes per season um, my, my favorite show of all time Savior of Renegade Angel has 10 episodes per season and it's the best show of all time so um, yeah cannot wait for season 13 That that's all I gotta say about it I guess uh, I probably make more sunny videos in the future because I love this show and I love thinking about it and, and talking about it. And that's all for today. Uh, that, that was this video would probably be well over an hour, but I, I'll try to edit it uh, to avoid too many lengths. Anyway, thanks for watching. That was really cool. I hope you enjoyed my list and peace.